Hi everyone, thanks for looking at my thread. Um, I'm just going to give you an update here on a few tests that I've done based on a lot of the questions. Uh, a lot are thinking that maybe the metal has some effect in the uh, in the whole process in the whole uh, thing here. Anyways, uh, there's my five cent nickel, and I tested it with a piece of aluminum and a piece of steel, and I'm getting variations in the results. Uh, the only variation, though, is if you're just using this nickel or this piece of aluminum or this piece of steel as the surface for doing the pulsing. So where, when I'm flicking the, uh, the power supply on it. Uh, the best results is definitely with the nickel steel, I believe. Uh, pretty close to it is the aluminum. I probably need a mechanical device to really... Uh, calculate it accurately, but po both the nickel and the aluminum pretty well perform the same way. Uh, the results are not as good as with the steel. So definitely these two, I'd say, would be the winners. Um, but anyways, neither of all these are necessary if you're just using the effect of the neomagnets for amplification. And what I've done here is I've uh, made a new test and found something new again here. And what I've done is I've just taken my two leads and I've flattened them out and just put a little bit of solder on it and I've attached two neomagnets uh, to it. Well, they're just magnetically holding together. So I've got a north and a south here on each side. And I found if I'm pulsing from here, from the north, and the south and back north south north south I'm now actually capable of kicking the voltage much higher and faster than just pulsing the top of the north or either the south uh, I had already tested that pulsing flipping the magnets around pulsing the north or pulsing the south and the results were pretty well the same uh, but I hadn't done a test of pulsing north south north south uh, back and forth and I will do that right now uh, for you to show you that I'm ca capable of now going uh, actually even over 200 volts. Uh, I won't go over 200 volts because my cap is only rated at 200 volts, but I'll bring it right up to there. And um, I've actually changed my power supply. I've got a, just a, a wall power supply here, 110 to uh, 12 volt, and this one's actually a uh, 1,200 milliamps. Uh, compared to the other power supply that I was using was a 12-volt, uh, 7-amp uh, rated power supply. So, uh, and here I'll just connect that power supply in, and we'll measure what voltage it's giving us. And my negative lead here is connected already to the voltmeter here which is set at 20 volts and I'll hook the positive here and okay so the power supply is outputting about 7.7 7, uh, volts uh, DC and I'm just gonna pause the camera right now and hook up the uh, this these leads here back and I'll start it over and we'll look at what happens when I'm pulsing the uh, neo magnets here north south north south Okay, I've got my voltmeter set at 200 volt setting here. And I'll just short with the light bulb the circuit here, make sure the cap is drained. And um, so we're starting here at zero volts. Here's my positive lead to my step down tra transformer, the 12 volts. The negative lead is already soldered right onto the circuit. And there's my bridge and capacitor. So the circuit is identical, just the two neo quarter inch cylinder magnets sandwiched with the wires in the center. All right, and I'll start the pulsing here. Now notice we're already up to 100 volts in no time at all. And you'll notice the sound of the sparks are actually starting to, to increase. We're up to 150 volts. 160, 
there we go we're over 200 volts and I'll just drain that Let's see that it'll even light the light bulb all right so uh, if anybody out there can explain why this amplification is happening with the neomagnets and pulsing the tops from north south north south that would be greatly appreciated thank you for looking at this thread bye